What's happening, everyone? No, I am not getting a haircut. I'm actually upstairs in the pool hall at Marcus Samuelson's Red Rooster here in Overtown. It's his annual Overtown Eat Up, part of the South Beach Food and Wine Festival. He's invited us in. We're gonna go talk to some chefs, try some food, talk to Marcus a little bit. I'm just ready to eat and ready to explore South Beach Food and Wine. We're here. So Marcus, I'm curious, man, when you first looked at this neighborhood, I know that you had done Harlem, so you know what a gentrifying neighborhood mm -hmm. looks like, but you also have just an immense respect for a black, for the black community mm -hmm. and staying home. Yeah. But when you first looked here, understanding the history and all that, was there any hesitation? Did you think, I don't know if Overtown's ready for this. I don't know if I'm ready for this. Was there, what, what went through your mind? What was your process? So I would think about what the generation before the Leah Chases, the Sylvia Woods, et cetera, has done. The Patrick Clark for chefs like me. Mm -hmm. When you're chef with a large platform, sometimes you don't choose. You got to go. You got to do it. Because I know what it would do for this community because we've done it in Harlem. We strategically think about historical African-American neighbors like Overtown, like the Fourth Ward in Atlanta, like Newark in Harlem, right? Even if it wouldn't be packed right away, that's okay because mm -hmm. the vision is not for it. It has to be a why we're rushing? Let's get, let's become good. Mm -hmm. Let's be part of the neighborhood. Let's employ people. Let's figure it out and let's work. But at the end of the day, you got to run a business. You got to be profitable and you got to inspire the next generation. Right, right. Again, man, I have to say is the South Beach Food and Wine Festival is taking place much further east for the most part on the beach. And why not South Beach? I mean, it's beautiful here today. You kept it in the community. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it took a Marcus Samuelson, though, to draw what you've drawn here. But I look around, man, and I see the diversity in your yeah. dining room today. Yeah. And you're pulling these folks, yeah. man, not just the community, but you're yeah. pulling people from outside the community. South Beach Food and Wine is arguably the biggest food festival in our country, right? But think about if you're a black and brown business and you see the planes coming in and you see the tourists coming, but it doesn't impact your business. Now, that's not fair. The people in fabric that make the fabrics of this community, whether you go to Little Haiti or you go to North Miami, are mom and pops when you drive on the highway and you look a little right and left, the mom and pop stores that have struggled maybe before COVID, during COVID and post. So this is an opportunity to highlight those businesses. And my whole point about being a big famous chef is to see them mm -hmm. and acknowledge it. What's the point otherwise? You know what I mean? For me, what's the point? My man. No. Well, you've been very generous with your time. I know you got a yeah, thousand yeah. people yeah. showing up out there. You got a few hands to shake, so I'm gonna let you go. Thank you, man. Our brother, it's good Thank to you see so you, man. Yeah. Thank you. Enjoy Marcus. and enjoy the yep. festival. This is what it is. This is what it takes to make a food festival. It takes a village. I want to give a big shout out to Red Rooster and the entire team at Grove Bay and Red Rooster for making this happen. It takes a lot of people that work behind the scene, right? Uh, when you see the students, some of them wear a sea cap jacket. They're the next generation of chefs. They will be here. They're already in the building. But talk to the student. This is also why we're doing it. And in five, ten years, they're going to have their pop up. They are the ones that are going to do this. And you're supporting them. Look, all right. One, two, three. Sorry. Sea cap is That's all right. That's all right. through culinary arts. Right. But we teach life skills through inner city high school kid. We, go, we start really at junior year and then it leads up to competition that really learn life skills through the kitchen. Right. And Miami is our latest brand. We are nine states, mm -hmm. Florida is our last brand, mm -hmm. but all over the East Coast, Arizona, California, and it's a program that's been around for 30 years. And it's game changing for our industry because cooking school is very expensive. Absolutely. You work in culinary, you will always have a job, whether mm -hmm. you work in front of the house or back of the house. That's right. And it's such a great way to get students in to learn about people skills, yeah. problem solving. So right. young man, what's your name? My name is German Parson. So how did you find out about CCAP? My teacher, Ms. Fleury, mm -hmm. yeah, from Burger Tea. And I'm very thankful for this opportunity because I don't, I rarely do these things. Yes. It was yeah. great to be out here doing something new. Wonderful. How old are you? I'm 17. Nice. Keep it up, man. Yeah. Good, yeah. good yeah. job. Yeah. Good you. to see you here. And Booker T is right there. It's right there, literally behind us. And so it's right in the community, you know, Love it, which man. is great. Love yeah. it, man. Uh, and it's been, so Booker T was probably the first place I went to five years before we opened the restaurant. Mm -hmm. So I knew, like, what's the footprint's going to be besides the restaurant? Three, four years before the restaurant went to Booker T. And you so, built yeah. up that little student community. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah, yeah. I love it. All right, Nugget Death. One more time. Nugget Death. 
That's awesome. Thank y'all so much, man. That's all I got. I started doing pop up for about eight years while I was still working full time in the Mission Star restaurants. But I finally got my brick and mortar 13 months ago. The find us. We've been nominated so many times, so many places. But um, you can find us in Dakar Nola, our Instagram, D A K A R, and Nola. Thank you guys. What's up, sis? Hi, my name is Aaliyah, and I am from Hip Hop Eatery. At Hip Hop Eatery, we sell authentic soul food. So we have a variety of turkey wings, baked chicken, that southern type of soul food that your mama cook. And we're located in the heart of Liberty City on 57th, 5711 Northwest 6th Place. So. I'm Chef Darren from Purple Lit Oyster Company. I've been cooking for about four years, and I started Purple Lit Oyster Company about a year ago. And I'm about to, I'm like the wing stop with oysters. Today I got the lobster top target oysters, so make sure y'all come get it, okay? Yeah. PurpleLitOyster.com and, and Instagram at PurpleLitOysterCo. Y'all follow me, okay? Brady, it's a good thing. It's, it's a good thing. Big up your cell line. Chef Shelly, all the way from Brooklyn, New York. First and foremost, I have to sh shout out Chef Marcus Samuelson and Angela. I met them in Honeyland. They did not know me from nothing. They said, you need to be in Miami. Next thing I know, I'm in Miami. But we are representing, okay? For all the women of color, all the people that we need to represent the diaspora cooking. We sell Jamaican tacos and diaspora street food. We are based in Brooklyn, New York. Our name is Two Girls and a cook shop. You can find us at Essence Festival this year. You can find us at the U.S. Open this year. We're going to be at one music festival. We are far from traditional. We do pop-ups, catering, craft services. So we bring the food to you. So we thank each and every one of y'all for coming here and spending y'all hard work and money to collect, communicate, and bring the culture. What's up, friends and family? Praise the Lord. My name is Millie Patriot. I'm from the Bronx, New York. <laughs> Recipe writer, contributor for New York Times Food Network, Delish Food 52, and content creator. My, my journey is a little bit different. I had a restaurant in the Bronx, New York, and unfortunately closed right before the pandemic due to illegal glass plumbing work in the building. And I pivoted during the pandemic, feeding over 100,000 children, family members in the Bronx. And I was able to shift into a wonderful career that I feel like I was blessed with to do wonderful things for wonderful people. And that's why I call myself a com community chef. And I'm here with my wonderful partners, Restaurant Associates, where they operate and run many restaurants across the country. And I'm happy to continue my 13 year partnership with them. Oxygen of fried rice. We call this dish the Overtown Fish Fry. So the base of the plate is an old oxtail fried uh, rice. So we do a little caramelized plantain aioli. And then we take some Brussels sprouts, and then we get peppers, a little jerk honey butter, and then fried cabbage. Yes, sir. We have Kenny Gilbert. Nose it down, man. Love this suit. Thank you, brother. Good to see y'all. So, folks, I am here with Shelly Flash, Chef Shelly Flash, of Two Girls in the Cook Shop. Jamaican tacos. Now, one of the things that really caught my attention was you said this is not fusion. No, it's not. Tell me about what this is. This is culture blended. I love that. We take a lot of pride on paying homage to the culture that we are representing. In Jamaica, they like to say out of many one people. We like to say out of many one cultures. A lot of people came through that diaspora sector. We always want to think it's just an African thing. It's more than that. It's anybody that has come from their homelands and brought their food to this. So what we're doing is making sure that we're speaking to the young lady that is making the tortillas in Mexico. We're speaking to those in Japan that are making sushi wraps and rolls. You know, we want to make sure that we're doing it right. We're not just saying let's just match and save it together. We want to show integrity and homage to their techniques, their history, their stories, and what food meant to them. So we are blending these cultures together they can't feel it it's still theirs and it's ours at the same time yeah. this is something me and my daughter came up with and we we're like mom i'm a second gen you're a first gen how do we represent our story we were just like we have to make sure that we are unapologetically ourselves mm -hmm. and that we're telling the story of our experience so, oh, yeah man. now your family is from jamaica but you were yes. born here in florida i understand yes, but then moved to new york correct I was the first one i was yeah I was the first one born here my grandmother actually came over here in 1982 i made you myself yes <laughs> She came over and I was the first one born here. And then I lived here most of my life. And then I've been in New York for 10 years now. I got it. I love Florida. It will forever be a part of me. That's why we did the sweet tea today. Yes. 
but New York or raise you. New York, raise you New York or raise you. Oh yeah, you right. those streets will teach you. you. Now a little homage to Marcus Samuelson. You 100%. see what he's done in this community. 100%. We know what he did in Harlem. Doing that everywhere he goes. Just speak to that a little bit. What that level of recognition means to our community, means to us in the culinary world, hospitality. Speak to that, Chef. I went to Honeyland, Honeyland Festival with him and Von Weaver. And when I tell you, one of the quotes that they said, collection and collaborations are at the top. Competitives are at the bottom. And that's what Marcus is doing. He is collaborating and bringing our community together. I have my own business. He saw something else to me. And I said, hey, Marcus, I want to be in Miami. He said, we're going to get you to Miami. So that's a man that literally puts his money, yes. his position, yeah. his, his access where his mouth is. And he's doing that for this community. So do be a part of this historic neighborhood, mm -hmm. something that is so near and dear to my heart. Coming from Orlando, we had to fight for cultural identity a lot. Mm -hmm. Being a part of Overtown, where it is cultural identity. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you so much. Lovely to meet you. you. Thank you. Thank yep. you. Brad Johnson, Corner Table Talking with Chef Mickey. I want to hear how he got his name, but tell us about yourself, man. Jose Blackett, nickname Chef Mickey, Trinidadian. I migrated to the U.S. many years ago this year. I love to cook. I have two restaurants in Brooklyn, a catering company. Still, this is like my pop-up concept, hopefully to turn into a brick and mortar soon. Love that, man. So two restaurants in Brooklyn, post-pandemic, we're coming out of that now. How things been in Brooklyn? How's business? Business is tough. It's still tough. We still haven't recovered 100% yet. We fight to you start to see people come back, exactly. coming yes, out. Yes, yeah, definitely. Yeah. A lot of creative ways to bring them on special events, guest chefs coming, different ways to get them in. Two different concepts in Brooklyn? or Yes, one is Arapita. That's the one I'm representing today. That's Trinidadian restaurant and rum shop. Mm -hmm. Rum, Trinidad, we full of rum. So we are you doing rum punch? Your own rum punch? Of course, punch. Yeah. rum punch. <laughs> yeah, so then we have this Trinidadian food. So a lot of people do Caribbean food, but I decided to focus mainly on Trinidadian cuisine. I just wanted to show how I grew up on. Yeah. I'm a big fan of roti. Now, I have one of my old business partners, an artist, Alvin Clayton, is Trinidadian, right. makes a fantastic oxtail roti. You got anything like that on your menu? So, actually, the funny thing you said that. So, smallest burger food market that I'm in New York, there's one in Miami also. That's why I started everything I've seen last year. And one of my new pizza items is an oxtail burrito. Oh, but I'm man. using the roti with roti and rice and peas and stuff like that. Yes, it's sir. funny that you said that. Yes, sir. Yes. See that? See that? I was feeling that. Yes, My yes, man, yes, Chef Picky, yes. it's so good All to right, meet you, yes, brother. Yes, Best yes. of luck to you, man. Right, Thank, yes, you. Yes, yes, yep. Thank you. Thank you.